Fasting for ulcerative colitis. Does it help and is it sustainable long term? That's what we'll explore today and we're going to dive into the different types of fasting like water fast, intermittent fasting, and even the idea of one meal a day while also weighing the pros and cons of ketosis. Hi, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasri, a surgeon who specializes in reversing complex inflammation naturally using the mind-gut immunity method. We've refined our methodology over the past 12 years and have helped thousands of patients recover. We look at conditions such as ulcerative colitis and solve the root cause. As you know by now from the hundreds of research papers on the topic, the gut microbiome plays a significant role in modulating the immune response seen in ulcerative colitis. And if you want to know how we fix these issues, schedule a discovery call with me and I'll provide you with some helpful tips to get you started. Here are a few studies that describe fasting in the setting of ulcerative colitis. Here's a 2023 study on food avoidance and fasting in patients with IBD. And here's a 2020 study that questions the benefits of fasting for inflammatory bowel disease patients. I'll break down these studies surrounding fasting and share some personal insights into how it impacts ulcerative colitis over time. The MALT is home to trillions of immune cells that respond to what's happening in your intestine. Now, what's in your intestines exactly? Primarily it's food and a lot of microbes, including bacteria, funguses, and viruses. These microbes digest food and produce secondary and tertiary metabolites that can trigger immune response. So it's essential to focus not only on the right kind of food, but also maintain a healthy and balanced microbiome to address this issue effectively. I also encourage you to check out my other video titled Ideal Diet for Ulcerative Colitis, which I've linked in the description below. In that video, I go over the four criteria I use to evaluate whether a diet is effective or not. And let me just give you a preview. I'm a strong advocate for the phytonutrient diet or phyto diet, which we use extensively in our clinic with great success. When combined with a personalized microbiome recalibration, we often see significant symptom improvement within weeks. So make sure to check out the other videos for a deeper understanding of the role of phytonutrients in this healing. Now, when it comes to evaluating whether fasting or any diet is effective, I use the same four criteria. So here they are. Phytonutrient density and diversity, macronutrient requirements, microbiome specificity, and food sensitivity. If you're curious why these criteria matter, take a look at that video again, The Ideal Diet for Ulcerative Colitis. It's linked in the description, but I'll also quickly recap them here for your convenience. Phytonutrient density and diversity. Phytonutrients are powerful micronutrients known for their ability to reduce inflammation in the human body. Numerous studies highlight the critical role these nutrients play in managing ulcerative colitis. Here's one that shows the polyphenol quercetin and its importance in ulcerative colitis. Here's another study that looks at terpenes and inflammatory bowel disease. Here's yet another one that discusses the role of prebiotic fiber and resistant plant starch in inflammatory bowel disease. Phytonutrients are molecular compounds found primarily in plants and fungi that have a profound impact on health. They include superfoods and micronutrients and antioxidants. Research consistently demonstrates that supplementing with phytonutrients can help ease the symptoms of ulcerative colitis, and these phytonutrients can be categorized into several groups like terpenes, phenols, chlorophyll, thiocyanates, phytoenzymes, phytooils, prebiotics, and alkaloids. While there are also lesser known groups like betalanes from beets and hericinone from mushrooms, Rooms. Focusing on these eight main categories ensures that you're covering all the essentials to heal from ulcerative colitis. Deficiencies in these nutrients can disrupt the critical mind-gut immune system connection, which is key to managing inflammatory diseases like ulcerative colitis. The goal is to maximize and optimize your phytonutrient intake from everyday foods. And by maximize and optimize, I mean increasing both the variety and the concentration of phytonutrients in your diet. A diet lacking in these nutrients can make it hard for your body to overcome inflammation. Now, when it comes to fasting, we naturally consume fewer phytonutrients because we're eating less or not at all. And in fact, during a fast, phytonutrient intake is minimal if not absent. What often happens is that you might feel temporarily better while your digestive tract is empty. Less food means less to digest, so there's less strain on the intestines. However, without phytonutrients during the fasting session, your immune system isn't being regulated. This is why symptoms tend to return as soon as you stop fasting. One piece of advice I offer is to incorporate herbal teas if you're planning on doing a water fast or intermittent fasting within a six to eight hour eating window. Herbal teas provide the benefit of phytonutrients like polyphenols and terpenes without added calories. And these compounds are incredibly helpful in reducing inflammation 
and can support your body through the fasting process. Next, macro requirements and ulcerative colitis. Macro is short for macronutrients. These are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins which the body needs to function properly. There's a useful tool on my website called the Macro Calculator, which helps you determine your body's maintenance requirements based on your height, your weight, gender, activity level. And it's important to keep in mind that these macronutrient estimates are based on your body's ideal physiological function. But when it comes to fasting, however, you're either not getting these nutrients at all, or you're receiving them in reduced amounts over time. And that brings me to the discussion on the various types of fasting. First, you have water fast, which can be 20 24, 48, 72 hours, or even up to 5 to 14 days. You can have total caloric restriction, which is consuming less than 800 to 1,000 calories per day. You can have intermittent fasting, which means eating in a set window of time, 6 hours, 8 hours, 10 hours, or 12 hour window. And you can also have one meal a day, which is consuming all of your calories in one sitting. Regardless of the method, the primary benefit comes from ketosis. Ketosis is a state which the body can no longer use carbohydrates for energy, but instead relies on stored fat and muscle. Proponents of fasting often point to a process called autophagy, where the body cleans up old and damaged cells, and this is a natural anti-inflammatory process. However, there is a downside to these strategies. While they may alleviate symptoms in the short term, the symptoms almost always return. And what am I talking about? I'm talking blood, mucus, abdominal pain, visceral hypersensitivity. So what happens the second time, or the third time, or even long term if you keep fasting? When the symptoms come back, eating can become even more challenging. You might feel bloated, gassy, lethargic, low on energy even after meals. And these symptoms may make you reluctant to eat again, leading to a vicious cycle that's tough to break, especially if you're underweight. A body mass index, BMI of 18 or lower, is particularly problematic for people with ulcerative colitis. And you can easily check your BMI using the BMI calculator on the clinic's website by entering your height and weight. If your BMI is below 18 and you have ulcerative colitis, that's a serious problem. And I've treated people with BMIs as low as 13, which is extremely severe. When someone with ulcerative colitis has a low BMI, it means your body is in a catabolic state, breaking down muscle and protein instead of building it up, which hampers intestinal healing. Many of these patients also struggle to tolerate food and require careful coaching to help them reintroduce them to their diets. The key takeaway is that the solution to a dysfunctional gut microbiome should never be to stop eating or avoiding foods, even if the fasting feels good temporarily. And trust me, I used to fast myself, so I understand the appeal. But instead of avoiding food, the focus needs to be on resolving the inflammation first. Once that's achieved, normal eating becomes possible again. When my patients adopt this approach, they experience real recovery. Unfortunately, many people have lost hope in finding the right diet for ulcerative colitis and may end up avoiding food altogether. Here's a recent study that shows how intermittent fasting for prolonged periods of time can actually increase the risk of cardiac death. Furthermore, if you have caloric restriction for long periods of time, and we're talking over several days, weeks, months of intermittent fasting, various issues can arise. You have weight loss and muscle wasting. You have thyroid dysfunction. You have cortisol and sympathetic endocrine dysfunction, sleep disturbances, protein calorie malnutrition, which impedes wound healing progress and inflammation control, nausea, reflux, a feeling of fullness and decreased appetite, severe intermittent fatigue. And the reason I emphasize this is that the solution to a dysfunctional gut microbiome should never involve avoiding foods or stopping eating altogether. Instead, the primary focus should be on reducing inflammation first and then gradually returning to normal eating habits. Sadly, many people dealing with ulcerative colitis have given up on this idea of trying to find the ideal diet and may resort to avoiding foods entirely. If you're trying to determine the ideal macronutrient balance for managing ulcerative colitis, it's essential to focus on fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. For reducing inflammation, I recommend that approximately 50% of your daily calories come from fats, with carbohydrates and proteins each making up about 25%. The reason carbohydrates should make up a smaller portion of the diet, especially early on, is because gut bacteria, and particularly harmful microbes like candida, thrive on sugar. They feed on carbohydrates, and if your microbiome is already out of balance, adding sugar into the mix can make the problem even worse. Essentially, you have bad bacteria and fungus in the intestine. You feed it sugar, carbs, and fiber, and that leads to intestinal inflammation. This observation comes from my extensive experience working with thousands of patients rather than specific scientific studies. Now, if your goal is to lose weight, you may need to lower your intake of both carbohydrates and fats even further while increasing your protein intake and reducing overall calories. On the other hand, if you're trying to gain weight, it's crucial to increase your total caloric intake 
and find a more balanced ratio between carbs and fats. Simple sugars like glucose and fructose can stimulate the growth of both harmful bacteria and fungi. Similarly, simple starches such as those found in processed flour can lead to bacterial and fungal overgrowth in ulcerative colitis. Tracking your macronutrients can be significantly helpful to achieve your health goals. It does take some effort, but it's worth it. And with consistent tracking, this approach can actually help you improve your diet balance and long-term health outcomes in ulcerative colitis. As I mentioned before, feel free to check out some of my other videos or refer to the description below for additional resources. I've included links to the body mass calculator, a guide to the different types of phytonutrients needed to help reverse ulcerative colitis, and there's a macronutrient calculator on there to determine your daily carb, fat, and protein needs. There's also a fiber and starch guides to help you avoid the types of carbohydrates that worsen your gut microbiome dysfunction. As I said earlier, I work with patients directly to help them craft their diets using these principles, and they do exceptionally well. Their symptoms improve significantly, and they're able to get off their medication and lead healthy lives. The Fido diet, which I highly recommend and routinely use for my ulcerative colitis patients, is particularly effective for microbiome recalibration and addressing phytonutrient deficiencies. It also helps avoid food sensitivities while meeting nutritional requirements in the long run. For those of you who are under eating, this usually means you need to eat a lot more. However, you'll be eating more of the foods that not only help you gain healthy weight, but also heal inflammation the right way. This also helps avoid the negative consequences of prolonged under eating. It can be hard work to reverse the effects of fasting, but with the right approach, it can be absolutely done. So just to recap, the criteria I use to judge whether a diet will work for reversing the inflammation long-term in patients with ulcerative colitis are the following. Phytonutrient focused, meeting nutritional requirements, microbiome specificity, and avoiding food sensitivity. Okay, one last thing. I would love to hear your comments below. Comment on the types of food that exacerbate your inflammation and what you've done to avoid them in ulcerative colitis. And finally, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and be sure to share this video with someone you think it'll help. This is Dr. Chanu Dasari with the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic and I'll see you next time.